let's talk about one of the most commonly used materials in interior renderings, paint. Everyone thinks paint is really simple, but paint is extremely complex. So let me show you exactly what I mean and how to create beautiful photorealistic paint materials. So check it out. So before we get started, it's good if we understand the different types of paints, because if you didn't realize there actually are different types for different use cases and different you know, locations. So this is a picture of a, of a door I took. And if you get really, really into it, right? You see how the light hits, you see how we see all these details, all these like divots, these bumps, you know, the brush marks, right? That's how this, uh, that's how all this stuff is applied, right? This has got like a semi gloss sheen to it. So what we're seeing here, the light is the sheen. Okay. So we, this is a door doors and trim. So the part around the door, this thing get treated uh, about the same, um, in terms of like paint, you could see on this round corner edge, we're getting that nice sheen, right? But if we look at a wall, there's nothing, nothing really there in bedroom and living room walls, but a bathroom wall, a little bit shiny. So I want to talk about how to take these settings and apply it to your D5 file. So let's get into it. So I'm going to go right over here and I've got my, my walls, my trim and my door set up. Right now, they are all on custom material templates with really, really basic settings. And as you can see over here by my reference photos, this looks nothing like that. So let's talk about how to begin. So usually when you're working on a project, a client probably has a color spec. Most cases they do. Um, usually trim is white and then like walls, at least in 2025, are like an off white, like a gray or something. Really, really boring. Um, obviously there's accent walls, but you know how people can get. So you want to plug in the correct color. Well, how do you do that? If you go over to any website related to paint, they will give you color codes. Well, you're probably saying, well, I don't see a color code. I see their code, but I don't see the code to put into D5. So what you could do is right in D5, you've got the handy dandy eyedrop button. So if you click this guy, it will pick up anything on your screen. So look at that. It'll do that and then it'll convert it to the correct color space. So let's just say for argument's sake, this, this door is this green color. Yeah. I click that and now it's loaded up everything. So now that that's done and I have a perfectly paint matched door, let's talk about all the missing texture and how do we get that? So we're missing a normal and a roughness map. And those guys basically do all the heavy lifting. The normal is going to give us all this amazing detail. And then the roughness is going to help add some variation because not every surface is clean. So what I do is I go over and I search for a paint normal map. So there you go. So I've downloaded this and now let me plug it in and you can see not much has really changed. Well, that's because the scale is completely out of whack. So you want to make sure you toggle on triplanar and UV randomizer in case it's not a seamless texture. So once I do that, I'm going to plug in 12 and that just is a, is a good size. And right now you probably don't see anything. And that's because the strength is low. So I set this to one. And now let me get in a little bit closer and you can see, look at that. All these little bumps are beginning to emerge. So I know it's working. And if you were wondering about the 12, well, look at what happens when I do one. So you see how it's like so big. So 12 is to fix that. And you could, you know, do a different scale. You could do like 10, but it would be a little bit bigger. You could go higher as well, but I just found 12 is a sweet spot. So now that that's in a good spot and we're getting that kind of detail, we want to talk a little bit about roughness. So roughness is going to give us some variation between a super clean and like not so clean surface because over time walls accumulate dust, things get dirty, they get nicked. Um, so we want to plug in a map that will control that because right now the roughness is just it's perfectly flat. It's just responding to the normal map, but we can go one step further and add roughness. So what I've done is I, uh, all I did was search for a dirt mask seamless and I grabbed this one. And now let me show you what happens when I plug that in. It doesn't really look like much has happened until I go in here and actually play with the individual UVs. So you don't know what that means is you can actually have each of these secondary maps 
have their own UV scale. So if I click this, okay, I can now say, hey, I want you to be six. And you see how things are beginning to change? I have this one, and that basically makes it larger. I found like 10 to be the sweet spot for this guy, and I can play with the roughness just so you could see that a little bit more. So let me do that one more time. You see how much bigger that is than when I switched to 10? That's gonna give me some nice variation here. And you could play with this. That's the whole point of it being individual. So now, really up to you, but now you've got all this amazing detail on the door. So the one last thing I wanna to add to make this door perfect is add my brown corner. There you go. Cause just like my door here, right? I should have a sheen here and look at that. That looks pretty familiar, right? So you could see I've got like the normal working round corner and roughness to give me all this amazing detail. So if you're like, wow, that's pretty amazing. Well, look at it without anything. So this is the normal gone. This is just roughness, right? And then let me just turn this off. Like, look, that's a, that's a huge difference. So let me get this back. So just those two maps took no time at all. And it gave us all that detail. So let's kind of finish this up. So I'm going to just set this to be white because it is the door. And I'm going to duplicate this to my trim here because my trim I have on a different um, color. And you can see it's working really well. I'm getting all the light there. I'm getting the nice roughness there. That's looking good. And now all that's left is my paint. So I'm going to copy it again and I'm going to duplicate here. And now I can either grab you know, a color from Benjamin Moore's site, or I could just do an off gray here, and then I can play with the scales. But you can see, like, it is working here. Like, I've got the roughness plugged in. Um, I could change this around. That's super, super shiny. My walls are more typically, like, matte. If we go back to our little exercise here, right? They're, like, matte. Um, not so much, like, a gloss. And if you're unsure about, like, all this terminology and everything, let me show you this. Here's a great example of like what that means. So semi gloss has got a sheen, eye gloss, eye sheen. Walls are kind of like satin or eggshell. So they're kind of like matte, but not super, super flat. Ceilings are typically flat. And again, these kind of all belong in different locations. So this is a great little diagram I found um, in terms of like the locations and where to use them. So you could see that we've got semi gloss for trim molding doors, just like what I was saying. And then we've got eggshell for you know your walls um like family rooms typical rooms and then matte for like bedrooms so really really nice that this stuff is here and i didn't search anything crazy just search paint finishes you don't need to remember this it's like on the internet right so now that we've got that we've got a different finish here and then we've got our semi-gloss here and you can see this looks much more realistic than before so i'm going to go back here and now look at that i've got my nice little round corner here got a little bit more detail and generally I know this is done correctly and this might be a little hard to see in the recording but you should see almost like a little bit of noise on your paints it shouldn't be a solid color and I feel like that's what a lot of people do starting out it's just like a simple base color it doesn't have any of these maps and it looks kind of plain um, you know you should be able to like fly up to this and see those details as we saw like right here so this looks great really happy with that. And like, this is something you could just save to your library. So, you know, if you watch my previous video, all you do is you go up here, add to local, and this is something I use all the time. So why remake this? So do it once, save it to your library, and you're good to go. Anyways, that's it for this video. If you have any questions about that, leave a comment, I'll get back to you. And as always, like and subscribe helps the channel out and the video. See you next time.